Hey, let's prove that big O is transitive. So what does that mean? It means we've got a function f that is big O of g, and g is just some other function. We also have the g, that same function, is big O of yet another function, h. And we're trying to prove that this implies f is also big O of h. Now how are we going to do that? turns out we're just going to use our definition of big O. So if f is big O of g, we know that f of n, where, f, uh, where n is just the input size, is going to be less than or equal to some constant times g of n, such that, you know, c is greater than zero, and then we've got an n naught, which is our minimum input size, that's greater than or equal to zero, and then we have an n, or uh, we have all n, pardon me, we have all n, all input sizes are going to be greater than or equal to that, um, that minimum input size n naught. And if, if this is confusing, uh, please check out that video on the definition of big O. So we also know that g of n uh, is, and I'll, I'll include a link to my big O video in the description for this video. So uh, moving on to g of n, we know that it's going to be less than or equal to some other constant c prime. And I shouldn't say some other constant because these might be the same number, but we don't know. So we kind of we denote them differently so that you don't have to wonder, you know, are they are they the same? Are they necessarily different? We don't really know. It doesn't really matter. Um, we just say c prime and then c prime h of n such that c prime again might be the same as c but we aren't sure and then we say the same thing for n naught prime might be the same thing as this one but we don't know that's going to be greater than or equal to zero as well all n are going to be greater than or equal to that now here's when it gets a little bit tricky we want to start here kind of restating the obvious so g of n is less than or equal to c prime h of n. But we want to prove that this is transitive, so we have to kind of bring f of n in here somehow. The way we're going to do that is we're just going to incorporate this c in here, and our statement still holds, but now we can show that it goes f of n, big O, g of n, big O of some constant, times some other constant, or potentially the same constant, uh, times h of n. So we kind of just threw f of n in here, but our math still works out, so we can, we can actually just say that f of n is less than or equal to c, c prime h of n, as per our inequality, and uh, we already know that all n have to be greater than or equal to, um, uh, it will, in here we know that all n have to be greater than or equal to one of these guys, so out here we're going to go ahead and say we have to be greater than or equal to the maximum of the n naughts, either n naught or n naught prime. And this is just saying that f of n is big O of h of n, because these guys are both constants, so multiplying them together will just give you another constant. So this proves that big O is transitive. Um, in other words, if f is a function, it's big O of another function g, and g is big O of another function h, then f will also be big O of h.